Tulsi Gabbard, who ran for 2020 Democratic nomination, endorses Trump against former foe Harris. Former Democratic Rep Tulsi Gabbard has endorsed Donald Trump's presidential bid, furthering her shift away from the party she sought to represent four years ago and linking herself to the GOP nominee's critiques of Vice President Kamala Harris and the chaotic Afghanistan war withdrawal. Appearing Monday with Trump in Detroit, Gabbard, a National Guard veteran who served two tours of duty in the Middle East before representing Hawaii in the U.S. House, said the GOP nominee understands the grave responsibility that a president and commander-in-chief bears for every single one of our lives. The pair appeared at the National Guard Association of the United States on the third anniversary of the October 26, 2021 suicide bombing at Hamid Karzai International Airport, which killed 13 U.S. service members and more than 100 Afghans. Gabbard accompanied Trump earlier Monday to Arlington National Cemetery, where the former president laid wreaths in honor of three of the slain service members, straight Nicole Gee, Staff Sergeant Darren Hoover, and Staff Sergeant Ryan Noss. On Monday, Gabbard praised Trump for having the courage to meet with adversaries, dictators, allies, and partners alike in the pursuit of peace, seeing war as a last resort. She condemned the Democratic White House for the U.S. now facing multiple wars on multiple fronts in regions around the world and closer to the brink of nuclear war than we ever have been before. The former president's team announced later Monday that Gabbard would moderate a town hall with Trump that the campaign was planning for Thursday in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Gabbard has long signaled some level of support for Trump, even while she sat in the U.S. House as a Democrat. In 2019, she was the only lawmaker to vote present when the House of Representatives impeached Trump for his dealings with Ukraine. Gabbard was known during her four House terms for taking positions at odds with her own party's establishment. She was an early and vocal supporter of Send and Bernie Sanders' 2016 Democratic presidential primary run, which made her popular with progressives. Not seeking re-election in 2020, Gabbard ran for president herself instead, saying U.S. wars in the Middle East destabilized the region, made the U.S. less safe and cost thousands of American lives, and that Democrats and Republicans shared the blame. She tore into Harris's record during a primary debate and ultimately outlasted her in that race, which President Joe Biden ultimately won. Gabbard endorsed Biden but became an independent two years later, saying the Democratic Party was dominated by an elitist cabal of warmongers and woke ideologues. In the years since, she has campaigned for several high-profile Republicans, become a contributor to Fox News, and started a podcast. Another former Democratic presidential contender also just recently endorsed Trump. Last week, independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who last year ran as a Democrat challenging Biden for the nomination, suspended his campaign and said he was backing Trump in the general election. From Biden to Gabbard, here's what Harris past debates show before a face-off with Trump. Vice President Kamala Harris has repeatedly taunted her opponent's seeming reluctance to debate, telling a series of raucous audiences about Donald Trump's criticisms of her. As the saying goes, if you've got something to say, say it to my face. After first backing out of an agreement, Trump reversed himself and said he'd meet Harris on September 10th for an event hosted by ABC. That sets up a long-anticipated face-off between the Democratic and Republican nominees, and indeed the chance for both of them to deliver their attack lines directly at one another. Sharing a stage with Trump presents a critical chance for Harris to define herself and her opponent in a truncated campaign with many open questions about her policy positions. But it also sets up a major test, one that President Joe Biden failed badly enough that he ended his campaign and made way for her. A former San Francisco district attorney and California attorney general, Harris has long presented her debating prowess as a strength, and her sharp questioning of opponents has produced many a career highlight. But she has also had testy exchanges that didn't play as well. She certainly had a good rollout in the past few weeks, and that will naturally translate to expectations on the debate stage, said Aaron Call, director of the University of Michigan's debate program. Part of the problem is, President Biden did so poorly in the first one, there's no way she could do worse. 
And so that comparison is not going to help, but her debate history is a mixed bag. Trump faces high expectations too, and Biden's disastrous performance helped obscure that the former president delivered many falsehoods, from lies about the January 6 riot to misleading claims about abortion and immigration that went unchecked during the debate. Two Democratic primary moments offer insight into how Harris debates for Medig. Perhaps the pinnacle of Harris's short-lived 2020 presidential campaign was a broadside against then-candidate Biden, who later made her his running mate anyway. She seized on Biden opposing busing to integrate public schools in the 1970s by describing a young girl who boarded such buses before offering, that little girl was me. It was memorable, but also planned. Harris's campaign then posted the same phrase on social media over a picture of its candidate as a school-aged girl in pigtails. But a low moment of Harris's same campaign came at a subsequent debate. Another rival, former Rep. In Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii, launched a lengthy attack on Harris's prosecutorial record. Gabbard said Harris put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. With the audience roaring, Gabbard further accused Harris of having blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. Gabbard now says she was surprised that Harris's record hadn't been more carefully scrutinized during the primary. She said she uncovered the issues she raised not with opposition research, but by using Google. I was surprised at how unprepared she was to respond to them. Just from, you know, I would imagine that you'd prepare before going into a debate, Gabbard said in an interview. And also that she made no attempt to deny them, or frankly justify them, if she was proud of those decisions. Ultimately, this is disrespectful to voters if she's not responding to, or addressing, questions about a record that she claims to be proud of, she added. In her response on the debate stage, Harris attempted to dismiss Gabbard, saying, I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches or be in a legislative body and give speeches on the floor, but actually doing the work. She got even more personal after the debate, calling herself a top-tier candidate while suggesting that Gabbard was polling at zero or one percent or whatever she might be at. At a subsequent debate, Harris hit back, saying Gabbard had spent years full-time on Fox News criticizing President Obama. Ironically, Gabbard, who has served as a Fox News contributor, remained in the presidential race long after Harris had dropped out. Harris can show defiance in confrontational moments. Sometimes flashing a touch of defiance can work. Harris first established a national reputation as being especially verbally nimble while questioning Trump's nominee for Attorney General, William Barr, and his pick for the Supreme Court, Brett Kavanaugh. After Kavanaugh repeatedly sidestepped abortion questions, Harris demanded to know if he could think of any laws that give the government the power to make decisions about the male body. Forcing Kavanaugh to concede, I am not thinking of any right now. Call of the University of Michigan said Harris' 2020 debate performance against Republican Vice President Mike Pence was also well received. Her most memorable line then was probably rebuking Pence's interruptions by retorting, Mr. Vice President, I am speaking. She used that line again when protesters decrying the Biden administration's support for Israel's war with Hamas in Gaza interrupted Harris at a rally this past week near Detroit's airport. The vice president was at first accommodating, saying, I am here because I believe in democracy and everybody's voice matters. But she then continued, I am speaking now, drawing sustained applause from rally goers before adding, if you want Donald Trump to win, then say that. Otherwise, I'm speaking. Abandon Biden, a progressive group that has opposed the president's now defunct re-election bid over his Israel policy, bristled at Harris's disdain for citizens of this country who are pleading for an end to a genocide. Cullen Tiernan, who was a spokesperson for Gabbard's 2020 campaign, spent hours in debate prep with the then-Congresswoman before the onstage exchange with Harris. He played one of her other primary rivals, Tim Ryan, and laughed about coastal elites starting being a big problem for me, latching onto one of Ryan's catchphrases. 
Now a political activist based in New Hampshire, Tiernan said he saw parallels between Harris's debate stage reaction to Gabbard's criticisms and the interruption in Michigan, but not in a good way. As a progressive person, I'm looking for change and empathy and understanding about what's happening, he said. Not gaslighting, and feeling like the reality that is being discussed never existed. Gabbard said she hoped a Trump-Harris debate would showcase for voters the huge differences between the candidates. Given the history of many presidential elections, unfortunately, political theater is the norm, she said. But that substantive debate is really what we need and what we deserve right now.